in this video I want to go over the DNA double helix so just a little bit about its structure and what holds it together so the DNA double helix well double comes from the idea that there are two single stranded DNA molecules that come together and are held together in one double stranded DNA molecule and that's called the double helix specifically because those two strands don't just uh, line up together they actually twist about each other so they arrange themselves in an anti-parallel fashion and the reason why this is possible is because the strands themselves have a directionality they have directionality and um, po or polarity so directionality or polarity it's the whole idea that they have a five prime end and a three prime end so the two strands that line up against each other uh, one will line up 5 prime to 3 prime, and the other one will line up with the basis complementary in the opposite direction. It'll run 5 prime to 3 prime the other way. So the way that would look is that if we had one um, strand here, this red strand, going 5 prime to 3 prime down this way, then the blue strand would be going 5 prime to 3 prime up the other way. So that's the idea behind it being anti-parallel. Now the backbone, the backbone is specifically a sugar, oops, I put a Y, <laughs> a sugar phosphate backbone. Now uh, that backbone is of course these thick lines here, this thick red line and this thick blue line. I wrote here, I asked, is the backbone charged? The answer to that question is yes, it is charged. Well, what is it? Uh, that gives the backbone the charge. First of all, it's negatively charged, okay? And that negative charge comes from the phosphate groups, right? The phosphate groups have negative charges. So along this backbone, we're gonna have a bunch of negative charges here, and I can go through and and you know write them all out. These are all negative charges that I'm drawing here. So um, I mean, I can go on forever, but that's. The, per the whole idea is that this is this backbone is made up of sugar and phosphates. The the deoxyribose sugar and the phosphate groups. Those phosphate groups have negative charges on them. So DNA overall is a charged molecule. Now the interior here, that's the nitrogenous bases. Now, are those nitrogenous bases charged? Is the interior charged? The answer to that question is no. Those bases are not charged. Okay. Now this helix, it's often called a right-handed helix. Let me actually keep that in blue. I don't want to change the theme of the colors. <laughs> so here, this is a right-handed helix. And what does that really mean? It, if you were to look down upon this strand from the top here, if you're looking down at it with your eyes, if you followed one strand, that strand would move clockwise. Okay. So understanding that portion I don't think is all too important um, but if you as long as you remember that the DNA double helix is a right-handed helix that'll probably be good for any class that you might be taking another thing I do want to mention is that the uh, the DNA that exists in vivo in life is uh, B DNA so in vivo which is in life is the B DNA there are other forms of DNA Right, including uh, A DNA and, and Z DNA, um, but they're not the the natural occurring DNAs. So what holds these two strands together? So you'll notice I've drawn um, I've drawn these little dots in between it. I'll, I'll explain what that is in just a second. But I wrote here, how are these these bases held together? Because those if these bases on one strand right are interacting with the bases on the other strand they're held together primarily by hydrogen bonds okay so h bonds okay so these h bonds between the base pairs hold are the primary sort of force that hold these uh these individual single strands together in this double stranded dna now between each at pair there are two hydrogen bonds and between the CG pairs, there are three hydrogen bonds. So I've represented that here. I didn't actually write out the letters, but I wrote here that some of these, each of these dots represents a hydrogen bond. So two dots means two hydrogen bonds. Three dots means three hydrogen bonds. So 
this would be an AT pair and this here would be a, a CG pair. The way I remember that is a sort of silly way. I think uh, this CG stands for crazy guy. He wants all the H bonds. <laughs> uh, comic relief from studying, I'm sure. Um, or you think I'm crazy. I'm a crazy guy. Anyway, the point is that the AT pairs have two H bonds that hold them together. The CG pairs have three H bonds that hold them together. However you remember that, it's up to you. But this is how I remember it. And you probably won't forget that, how silly that was. Okay. Um, there are some other things, though, that hold these two strands of DNA together. The one key idea is this idea of uh, separation of hydrophilic regions. And uh, and hydro oops and hydrophobic regions. So the hydrophilic regions include the backbone. The backbone is is you know has these negative charges. Sugar phosphate backbone. It is hydrophilic, whereas the interior of these nitrogenous spaces are not so hydrophilic. They're more hydrophobic. And this is of course all relatively speaking, right? Um, Hydro like dissolves like, so the hydrophilic portions will want to stay together and the hydrophobic portions will want to stay together. So the separation, the fact that they're separated in this way, that the backbone consists of the hydrophilic portion and the interior is the hydrophobic portion, that helps stabilize the helix. In addition, there are, um, there are hydrophobic interactions. Oops hydrophobic interactions between the bases themselves. So not only are these bases held together by these H bonds here, uh, they're also held together by by interact the fact that that, that this let's just say this um, base pair, right, is right next to this one. The interactions here and here, those are hydrophobic interactions holding these together. And you can imagine that just this hydrophobic interaction or just this hydrophobic interaction going on here is not very powerful. But if you think about a really, really long strand, a, really, a bunch of base pairs, all these different interactions here holding this together, you can imagine that this is overall pretty stable. Um, so I hope that video was helpful in the, as a sort of overview about the double helix of the DNA, maybe a little bit more insight to what you've already known. Uh, like I said, I hope that was helpful. One last thing, I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moofuniversity at gmail.com and see the description below for more details. Thanks for watching.